find myself and find my roots. Oh, caught in a bad romance. Hey, we need to take it on the road. Take it on the road. She was born in the outskirts of Seoul to an American GI and a young Korean woman. He was born in Alsace, France, land of pork and cabbage. She was put up for adoption at three and then lovingly raised in Virginia by her new family. He was 16 when he began his apprenticeship. She found her birth mother when she was 19. He came to America and became one of the world's greatest chefs. They fell in love and married over a decade ago. Now, Jean-Georges and Marja return to her birthplace to chronicle the tastes and traditions of Korea. These are the Kimchi Chronicles. Korea is a largely mountainous country. Throughout history, any stretch of flat land was dedicated to growing the most valued of crops, rice. Rice is the bread and butter of the Korean table. It's not merely a staple, it's the staple. Rice is often simply steamed. It gets stir-fried with kimchi and becomes crispy at the bottom of hot stone pots. It's eaten in things and alongside everything. It's the anchor in the canvas of every Korean meal. The most noted places for rice are Ichan, just an hour southeast of Seoul, and Kimje in the southwest of Korea, a long, long way from Busan. But that's where we started our rice adventure. Busan, Korea's second largest city and the world's fifth largest port, is at the southeastern corner of the peninsula. It's a booming, prosperous commercial city that's expanding rapidly. But Busan also boasts some of the best beaches in Korea. One sunny 75 degree December day, I met up with my friend, the wonderful actress Heather Graham. But, um, I was born in Ujungbo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was born to my mother, who was uh, single, 19, uh -huh. she had me. And um, my father was a, a serviceman. And then I was adopted to the States wow. at three. And, you know, grew up in Northern Virginia, uh, right outside of DC. Cool went to college and I just decided, you know, at 19, ironically, same mm -hmm. age as my mom giving me up, um, or having me, my mother mm -hmm. having me, I decided I wanted to find myself and find my roots. And mm -hmm. a few months later, after some research, I was able to find her wow. in New York. She must have been blown away, huh? Yeah, she, she was. Up. And, you know, it's funny because when I was, when I was, um, Growing up, I had memories of her, but it was only from like a three-year-old's height mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. So I remembered her physically there, but mm -hmm. I could never remember her face. And then mm -hmm. when I flew to New York to see her, it's just there was just this wall of people, and I, I just saw her face, and I just knew it was her. Like, we just wow. knew each other instantly. She looks like you? She does. <laughs> so my mom whisked me to her uh, house in New York in Brooklyn. Wow. She proceeded to stuff my face with Korean food oh, because that's cute. what Koreans do, mm -hmm. if you haven't noticed already. <laughs> um, and awesome. then she poured me a bath and she came in and started scrubbing me, which is very odd because, yeah. you know, I mean, I think in America <laughs> after you're six or whatever, you take your right, own bath. Right. But anyway, she was scrubbing me for two pur purposes. One, you know, that's what Korean mothers do. Mm -hmm. And two, she was looking for a birthmark wow. on my leg. To see if you're being... To you're make sure it was me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, she saw it and it just... That's so interesting, huh? So I've spent 16 years of my life rediscovering my culture and all my family's here on my mother's side and wow. I've just got this amazing... Are you close with them? Very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like wow. I, I miss them the first half of my life but I get them the second That's half. So amazing. Which I think is even, even better and more special. Heather and I could have happily spent our day at the beach, but we had an appointment to keep. On the outskirts of Pusan is the CJ factory number two, where they mill and refine the rice. 
They told us to suit up and we followed suit. My go-to Korean food guru, Diana, showed us a drill and we fell in step. Looking like the Three Musketeers, or maybe the Three Stooges, we watched the three stages of rice milling. Taking it from unprocessed brown rice to a husked yellow version, and then finally refined white rice. Koreans prefer a short-grained, slightly sticky rice, which happens to translate to a great instant rice. Rice fresh off the line is mighty good, but we were about to take a big step up in the rice world. At Kegum Market, while groups of female vendors took their lunch breaks, we found our way to Saim Dang Dok, known for making some of the freshest, most delicious dok in town. Dok means rice cakes made of ground, then pounded and steamed rice. Dok can be sweetened and served as dessert or stir-fried with kimchi for the most savory of dishes. To make dok, first Min Sook Yoon takes rice that's been soaked in salted water for three hours before being drained and then ground into a powder. Not a lot of water is added to dampen the powder. This loose dough gets packed into wooden molds and then is steamed for just 10 minutes. Wow, it's beautiful. Uh, so this is wow. the um, already steamed. Mm -hmm. right, look at that. Can you smell it? Yeah. Smell this is what chefs do. <laughs> So now it's going to get extruded through this machine, almost like pasta. Right. And before, you know, traditionally we had to pound it. Oh my God. For a long time. Oh my gosh, you see how he's Whoa. taking the. I have never seen this before. This is so cool. Oh, he's going to put it back through again? Yeah, Why does so he do he, that? Because to make it very sticky oh, and okay, you know, I got add it. the tension. Wow. So there it comes. It's the first time I'm having it actually fresh yeah. off the uh, I think kids would really like this, right? They do, my daughter loves yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It's fun. We eat it especially on New Year's Day. Mm. Right. So you're not really aging a year if you haven't had this stuff, right? Mm. So Say what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good yeah. luck for the year, like if you eat this? Good luck and also it's a symbol mm. of um, longevity. Mm. But here can show you the product that's already mm. been cut. Oh, the finished yeah. product, okay. Finished. She's the wife of the, uh, the man who just showed us how to make the rice cakes. I love this cake because this is a very spongy cake. Mm. So when I was little, I used to love this cake. This is the kind of rice cake that we eat during Thanksgiving. The one with honey and uh, sesame. Yeah. Yeah. Honey and sesame. Well, you want to eat it when it's as mm. fresh as possible. So which one are you going to do, ladies? I'm going to try the green one. I'm yeah, trying pink. Too. Watch out. Mm. Mm, so, so. Mm. Mm. It's so nice. <laughs> kind of nutty inside. <laughs> we had three different, mm -hmm. wow. That's good. You like it? Mm -hmm. I told you this is my favorite one. I like how they're keeping it warm. It keeps it soft. They're good. Fresh stock is hard to beat, but we were about to take yet another step up in rice cookery. Dongne Halme Pajon is Busan's oldest and one of its most famous restaurants. It's always been run by women and for the past 15 years, Jung Hee Kim has overseen the restaurant that her great-great-grandmother-in-law began. We were there for the dish that made the restaurant famous, Dongne Pajon. Pajon are the popular Korean scallion and seafood pancakes. Dongne Pajon are made with a rice flour batter that results in a soft, almost creamy, but very yummy pancake. Thanks for coming to her restaurant. Absolutely. Very excited. She's fourth generation. I love that. It's 70th year since wow. they opened the restaurant. I love how you can see her making. Yeah, the open kitchen. Yeah, nice. Mm. Actually, you know, the scallion pancakes that we're going to eat, and which is a specialty of this restaurant, mm -hmm. she said it always tastes best on a, mm -hmm. a sort of a rainy day or a gloomy mm -hmm. day because 
the sound of the falling rain is the same as the scallion pancakes cooking on the stove. Mm -hmm. ah, so you can nice. hear the sizzle. So when it rains, most Koreans think about eating scallion pancakes. Their scallion pancakes are very particularly special because mm -hmm. they use very thick steel pan. Mm -hmm. The way they cook it is it's almost like playing the accordion. You know, right. they spread out the scallions and then they pull it all together and add a lot of different seafood to it. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. very important that they cook it once they get the orders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh so no, no, my subway now. Wow, that looks wow. really pretty. So beautiful looking. Uh, inside the pajan, obviously the scallion, mm -hmm. There's clams, mm -hmm. there are shrimp. Wow. This soft part is a sweet rice powder mixed mm -hmm. with regular rice. And then there's egg. At the last minute. So it's really soft here. They use a lot more sweet rice powder. So it makes it really soft. So delicious and fresh. Mm. The colors mm. and... Yeah, it's gorgeous. Mm. Is pajan typically served with makgeolli? Um, makgeolli was the kind of drink that a lot of the commoners usually drank or farmers drank after working in the fields. And pajan is very simple and fulfilling. Right. Take probably scallions from the field and add, you know, whatever egg to it. Peasant food, I always find, is the absolute best mm -hmm. food in any country. Because it's simple. It's like it's simple. I mean, that's what you want to eat. You know? All right, peasants. Yeah. Let's have a makgeolli toast. Oh. Diana, you get an A plus for your food tour. Thank you. Rice. We're talking about rice today, which is one of your favorite things, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are we making today? Kimbap. Yes. Kimbap. All right. So do you know what you're doing? Yeah. But kimbap, it's, it kind of looks like what? It looks like sushi a little bit. So you can put whatever you want in it. It's crispy, yeah? Yeah, it's crispy. You get these sheets. And we're going to put it on this little mat here. Chloe, why don't you take a little bit of rice and spread it? With this? Yes, perfect. You can also use your fingers, honey. Okay. You put the fingers in the water, and then you spread the rice. See? There you go. That's easier. Okay, you're gonna use your hands? Mm-hmm. That's good. There you go. Hey, you could get a job making yeah, sushi. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Kimbap is, is really popular with uh, Korean children, and it's taken a lot on picnics, because it's yeah. easy, you don't have to refrigerate it, and it's easy, you don't need any utensils. And you can put whatever you want in there. So, Chloe, go ahead, Vazi. What are we gonna put in there? Oh, that's your favorite too, no? This is, um, this is pickled uh, moo. There you go. It's crunchy and it adds a nice little what something is this one in there. Here? That's kimchi, rinsed off for Chloe. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. She likes the sour taste of kimchi, but sometimes the heat is can be a, a bit too spicy? much. Yeah. You know what you're doing, girl. All right, show daddy what to do. Good job, squeeze okay. and roll. That's fun. There you go. Perfecto. Daddy, can you cut that? Absolutely. Just make sure can you wet the knife. Can you cut it thin? Yeah, small pieces, please. Wow, mm -hmm. that's good. It does look good. So a little bite, I guess? Mmm, that looks really good. Can you serve that with a sauce, or you, how do you, how you do this? This isn't really served with sauce. But my favorite is, don't look at me funny, but it's this one really spicy nice. tuna fish with kimchi and cheese. <laughs> spicy tuna fish? Yeah. Wow. It's really good. So you can do different variations. Here, babe, try. What about this one here that you made? What you, what you put in this one? Oh, you can do leftover bulgogi. This is a little bit of carrot, spinach, takwang, egg, and cheese. Oh, awesome. the cheese makes it happen. Mmm. Right? How is the cheese? <laughs> I like the, um, the takwang, mm -hmm. crunchy takwang. That's what you like too, huh? That's lunch, Chloe made lunch. Mm. All right. I like it with the cheese, huh? See? It's nice. All right, so now that you've done your rice thing, Chloe, Daddy, and I are going to go do ours. Okay? Yeah. So you're going to help me, right? Mm -hmm. All, All right. right, let's move on down here. I'm going to put a little bit of sesame oil in the pan, probably about two tablespoons. Okay, I'm going to put some onion in there, diced onion. Let's see, we're going to. Yeah, onion always smells good, especially with sesame oil. It smells good. 
This is the perfect dish to get rid of leftovers. Everybody has rice. For fried rice, anyway, you use always uh, old rice from the day before. No? Yeah, exactly. It just cooks better. I'm going to add some uh, kimchi, very sour kimchi. All of it? Yeah, all of it. Okay, Chloe, can you go grab that kimchi juice for me in that bowl? I need to saute it for a little bit. I like to just incorporate the, the flavors okay. together. Here you go, Mom. Thanks, sweetheart. I'm going to add kimchi juice as well. What you like? Is it? Yeah, perfect. Smells good. Yeah, right? Okay. So I'm going to add the day old okay. rice. <laughs> oh, it looks All like right, a giant good. mountain. A mountain of rice. That's it. Mm. Oh, my goodness. While I finish smushing the remainder of this rice up, you want to go ahead and start yours, babe? Fried rice is, uh, you know, pretty much the same technique. People have different flavors, add right. different flavors to it. So right. I think you can put the ginger on the garlic. Right now? Yep. There we go. Everything. Good job. So mince, ginger, garlic. I'm adding some uh, scallion, onion. And what kind of rice do you use for your... Uh, this one I use uh, jasmine, but okay. you can use any rice. Okay. You really want the rice to be fluffy like that. Mm-hmm. That's why I think you also should have separated before. You know, just like Thanks, a, No, just... <laughs> just a, a little advice. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, we're adding the rice. Nice. Can you see what you're doing? Okay. okay. Add a little uh, coriander <laughs> touch. We're going to put a bit of a spice. <laughs> a little heat. So I'm gonna plate my uh, yep. my rice, and I'm gonna go ahead and plate my kimchi fried rice. I think I'm gonna need some oh, help me, or some help major out. muscle. Let me help you out. Okay. So you wanna do a nice mount in the middle? Yes. There we go. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Always. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that looks really good. It looks amazing. Bring so we're gonna plate. just uh, add mm -hmm. the eggs to the delicious on top of the rice. Mmm. Ah. And here I have just a little bit of crumbs, which are fried garlic and ginger. And then the only thing, uh, if you're going to give me a little drizzle of uh, sure. over the top with the sesame oil. Voila, mm -hmm. that's good. And a okay. bit of, uh, of soy sauce. Beautiful, that looks so good. You love rice with soy sauce, huh? Mm hmm There we go. Chloe, so which one do you want to try first? Mommy's delicious one or Daddy's eh? Which one? You should try both. Of oh, course, okay. that's Mommy's girl. All right. I'll give you some with not too much kimchi. Is that spicy? Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is spicy. It is spicy. Really hot? Sorry. Mm. Let's try daddy's now. Yes, you crack the yolk. Oh, crack the yolk. Hmm? Now Don't crack worry. it like a professional. Oh, yeah. so the, the, there we go. You know, the eggs is really running yeah. through the rice. This is hot. Let's try. Go, try. So you're going to try more food with, uh, on the TV? I think so. We're going to make you. Mm. That's very good. Don't you like this one? Which one do you like better? Be honest. Both. Oh, you're so diplomatic. Mm. I love you. The distance from Busan to Seoul is 450 kilometers. But on the KTX, the country's high-speed train that speeds along at a brisk 180 miles per hour, the trip takes just two hours and change. Even though Heather and I both said we weren't hungry, the best part about the train ride was the eating the Doshirak box, a tray divided into separate compartments. The Doshirak box offers a terrific, healthy variety of neatly packed food. It's called Doshirak? Yes. Uh -huh. Am I pronouncing that right? You're very good. You can also get dried squid on here and peeled chestnuts, mm -hmm. banana milk, which is mm. one of my favorite things. It's a lot of taste. It is. We've got every food group on this tray. Mm. I feel like I'm actually eating a healthy meal as opposed mm. to being on the train and ordering sandwiches. Mm, just like a hamburger. Hot dogs. Or... I'm starting to really enjoy kimchi. Oh, I'm so glad to yeah. hear that. And you know, there are like 200 different kinds of kimchi mm. and not all of them are spicy, mm -hmm. which is nice. Mm -hmm. I think food always tastes better at 180 miles an hour, don't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the shortest way to travel is with a friend and food. It's so true. And kimchi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seoul has thousands and thousands of places to eat, and just about all of them serve rice. Above all is bibimbap, the iconic Korean dish of rice with various toppings. Koreans and foreigners in the know adore bibimbap, and recently it's inspired a new restaurant chain that has given the classic dish a modern twist. 
BBGo takes the customary components of bibimbap and combines them with the efficiency and convenience of fast food. I visited the Seoul location with Heather and Hee Young No, the woman behind the BBGo concept, and Anthony Hunt, the American chef who created the recipes. It's a completely personalized, healthy version of fast food and an absolutely delicious eating experience. With BBGo locations already in Korea and Los Angeles, Heather and I began petitioning for one to open in New York. I'm so excited to be here. I've heard about BBGo, but I've never been, and you don't have one in New York, unfortunately. Yeah. I think it but would it be great there. But it is coming soon. Though. Okay, good. I want one by my house. I would eat this good. all the time. I know actually. you would. Yeah, because this is like a healthy fast food. What we're trying to do is adapt it more towards everybody's individual palate. Mm -hmm. That's why we're giving more sauces, more choices. Right. The regular rice, lack rice, as you see here, mm -hmm. and yeah. barley. These are the bibimbap rice, which is more like a salad mm -hmm. type of bibimbap, and then this is the actual bibimbap. Traditionally, you do the kohat sauce, which is kochujang, to really give it a little bit of kick. I want to make a really good, healthy, fast food. People, they want to have a choice. Mm -hmm. It's not more healthy. Yeah, yeah, more and not you know, everybody eats the same. Right, right, yeah. right. So that's why I developed the sauces. Mm -hmm. We can pick the, all the vegetables. Oh, the food. sauces are amazing. Mm -hmm. I love sesame oil. Anything with sesame oil. Oh, yeah, it's good for and you. And the crunchy bits of the rice as it gets kind of like cooked on the bottom of this mm -hmm. bowl. These bowls are so special, especially to this particular dosa bibimbap. Mm -hmm. When you put the rice in this bowl, it, it gets a nice crust mm -hmm. on the bottom mm -hmm. and it's a little bit sticky. Mm -hmm. Yes. I usually stick it on like a medium flame for about mm -hmm. 10 minutes to let mm -hmm. it heat and then I turn it off. Mm -hmm. This retains heat for, mm -hmm. yeah, for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Things taste different when yeah, you make yeah, it in this yeah. pot. So we put in a little bit of sesame oil mm -hmm. down at the bottom because it keeps it uh, so the, the sesame oil sticking. gives it the taste. The right, taste. it gives it that little bit of, mm. and it also helps with that little bit of crunch. Mm. So yeah, and it helps flavor mm. that, so it's really good. And then you never ever wash this with soap. Nope. Really, how do you ever. wash it? Mm. Well, my mom puts it back on the fire if there's anything stuck on it, and just mm. boil water in there. If you need to scrub it at all, take mm. like a um, wooden bamboo, Never like with a steel sponge or anything like that because it literally absorb all of the flavor. So if you put soap in there, it absorbs it. When you heat it up, and you put some like soap. 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 <laughs> you, you just gotta get rid of it. <laughs> when you come to eat here, do you always get to sit with the um, winner of Korean American Idol? Because <laughs> if that's the case, I'm coming. I think a lot of girls would come too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. No, you live in Korea, obviously. No. Yeah. Yes? Right. But when it raised in Chi Town. Exactly. Yeah. I know it's a very common Korean dish, but is it something you still enjoy and want on a regular basis? Oh, of course. This is delicious. Mm. <laughs> My husband would love this. So is it easy to make bibimbap? Because it seems hard. Oh, yeah. This is easy. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite easy. And you have to prep the vegetables first. Once that prep is done, everything is just like mm -hmm. throw together, mix it up. Where are you going next, chef? Well, if I can convince her and if we can find a place in New York, we'll head to New York as well. You You're coming yeah. to New York. Yeah. I am, I am starting a petition. Yeah. <laughs> no, you find me the good site. Next to my apartment. No. <laughs> Is there any way we could get you to sing for us? <laughs> yeah. My favorite song karaoke is Bad Romance. Uh -huh. Lady Gaga? Yes. Why don't you sing a little bit and I'll Okay, I'll, I'll start and you have to join in, Let's otherwise I'll kill you. <laughs> we'll see. <sighs> I haven't had any soju yet. This is gonna be a disaster. <laughs> She's gonna do okay. it. She's gonna do it without the soju. <laughs> Whoa, caught in a bad romance. Whoa, oh, caught in a bad romance. Hey, we need to take it on the road. One final note. Heather and I met up with Taekwondo Grandmaster Shin Chil Kang and his equally talented daughter Yujin Kang in the Chosun Hotel's gym. Turns out, Heather has some martial arts chops and kept up with the high kicks and sharp punches. Me, I was much more of a real life Lucille Ball, just trying to hold it together. I kicked as high as I could kick. I stretched as far as I could stretch, but thank goodness, laughing burns calories too.